Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen TLDR news, looking at what's been happening with the game's development for the week ending the 20th of September 2020. Alpha 3.11 is with the Evocati currently and will be going to the first wave of PTU at some point in the near future and I expect that we will have a 3.11 live build for around the 10th of October at the moment. There are various roadmap updates for 3.11 and 3.12, relaxation of armistice zone restrictions for 3.11 has been added, allowing ship combat in armistice zones around the rest stops. FPS weapons are still disabled though, it is ships only, however these stations are policed by new destructible defense turrets and the ability to call security response ships as needed. More to this, there's also what I would refer to as a GTA 5 style heat system where more powerful and more plentiful security forces turn up over time based on the sort of like combined um, rating of uh, criminals in that area. If you are a five star super crim, um, there's going to be a load of uh, quite powerful ships coming in uh, and turning up uh, to deal with you over time. We also know there's lots of quality of life tweaks to the law system too. I have some videos covering those changes in much more detail which I will link down below if you're interested. The Stanton system spacecaping feature has been added to Alpha 3.12 utilizing the newly available gas cloud tech and gas and dust simulation elements. They're going to be using that to craft spacescapes around points of interest, Lagrange points, space stations, all over the Stanton system to help the overall aesthetic and sort of like have much better looking gameplay areas. This now also incorporates ship AI hazard awareness and avoidance as AI pilots need to be able to navigate obstacles and dynamic entities as realistically as possible, including asteroids, hazardous gas clouds, structures and other ships, some of which will be included in that spacescaping update. And because they work together, they're sort of merging the features and working on them for 3.12. Updated ground textures and geology moved into the polishing phase for 3.11 as well. Cloud Imperium have been pretty good with interaction and updates over the last week or so. We've even, as I said more recently, had Chris Roberts return to the forums and talk about damage control on ships. Power relays are a new component that can get damaged and might need to be repaired by a crewman or engineer in the future. Fires can start on the ships and they need to be put out and they will burn through oxygen in an area. You can open air locks to deal with those fires or use a fire extinguisher. Um, dealing with ship damage quickly and efficiently will make a critical difference in your success in the game, especially in larger ships obviously. Uh, also, once physicalized damage and components are in, ships can still entirely explode if a power plant or ammo storage area goes critical, but ships will actually more commonly be disabled as a component or, or power relay fails or, or gets destroyed. Further to that though, Chris Roberts has now started a thread, Ask the Chairman, where he said that the most upvoted question posted there um, that conformed to some rules will be answered later this weekend. And it looks like this is going to be, how is the dynamic economy shaping up and is server meshing an essential requirement before Qantas show up? Now, even if you don't think your question is going to be asked this week or whatever, I still think it's worth putting questions in there. I suspect that they will look at this more in the future and answer more questions would be my hope and expectation, but also at least CIG know what questions are being asked and that will influence stuff I suspect. And as I said, hopefully this won't just be a one-off uh, with Chris just going, one for the chairman, done. Uh, hopefully he'll start answering questions more regularly again. From the newsletter this week, there was a sneak peek of the Cure Life what appears to be like a hypo spray type medical gadget. We know that they're working towards various medical mechanics and this is part of that. Probably an item that we can use on other players and NPCs, um, maybe like a medical role for uh, theaters of war in the shorter term, but um, yeah, expect um, medical gameplay to be coming into the game pretty soon. Also this weekend, Star Citizen be celebrating pirates. There's a screenshot competition for the most piratey screenshot, which has ships as prizes for the top three. Wow, that, um, yeah, let's not do that voice. That, that hurts my throat. The Pirate Caterpillar and Pirate Gladius are available in store to those that beat Pirate Swarm in Arena Commander. Also available over the weekend are the Buccaneer and F7CM Super Hornet for anyone to purchase or to upgrade to. And this is in addition to the Ship Showdown, um, which has loads of ships available to buy as well. And talking of that, the Ship Showdown has moved into round two and you still have until the 23rd of September to try Star Citizen and those Ship Showdown ships for free. That's a lot of alliteration. Star Citizen Live talked about new builds and publishers that the game goes through. There are many builds 
builds that players never see, and there can be as many as four builds live internally at any one time. It's not uncommon to see up to 20 builds in a single day during uh, a push for publishing these builds. Apparently, the game services backend equipment is industry leading. Uh, all of the game servers are exactly the same spec. Servers that crash can be brought back up within seconds. Fleet Week was a nightmare when it came to all the back-end services imploding, uh, but they have much better sort of stress tolerance testing and many lessons learned now. The Inside Star Citizen this week showed off the new inventory system, which allows you to have uh, much better management options with items and then interact with external containers. Pyro is getting a lot more love. We saw some work on a volcanic-ish moon uh, in that new star system. They showed off some updates to planetary tech for prettier planets coming in 3.11. Also, refinery facilities that are coming in 3.12 were shown off. This is uh, a further expansion to station facilities and basically a sister sort of feature to cargo decks. Excitingly, they also showed off some of the 3D evolved concepts of homesteads. There will eventually be new points of interest, similar to outposts, commonly around the game as part of fleshing out the world and uh, the universe and for missions and for places to visit and, uh, and all that sort of jazz as well. And that's it for this week's Star Citizen TLDR news. But what do you think? When do you think we'll see 3.11 come out of Eva Carti? Have you been playing during the free fly? What do you think? Are you looking forward to some of the new additions in Alpha 3.11? Do you think changes to the green zones could cause turmoil? Whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. What am I shilling for today, I hear you ask? Do you hate it when people steal all of your money and your house over the internet? I know I do. NordVPN may have been invented by wizards to help protect your personal data from the prying eyes of the dark web, a sinister cabal of technomancers that grow in power the more they know about your browsing habits. The true story of NordVPN's origins are unknown and lost to the ages, and without using facts. No one really knows how it provides more accessibility to otherwise censored websites or a safer security experience for all that use it. All I know is that it does and that when you sign up to it, the power level of my bank account grows and I use it and maybe you should too. Every month we have a giveaway for a Star Citizen ship. For this month of September, it's for the Talon Night Fighter, the Battlebird Glass Cannon. Just comment on any of my videos made during September 2020 to be in for a chance of winning that. That ship should be flyable by the end of the year. If you'd like to further support the channel, there is Patreon or YouTube channel memberships via the join button down below. That will net you some exclusive content each month, but sharing videos, liking, subscribing, dinging the bell, as well as commenting and giving feedback really does help the channel to grow and give me an idea of what you guys want. Thanks very much for watching, you take care, and I'll see you in the verse.